Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today's video is a collection of clips that didn't get in other videos throughout the year, so I put them all together in this one video. And after the last one, which is the pocket hole clip at the very end, I'm going to do a little quick announcement on an update on the Kansas City show that I'm going to be to um, actually in just a few days. So uh, for those of you who are going to that show, you'll want to check that out as well. So anyway, here's the video. I'm making another temporary workstation and I'm using a door again because it's nice and straight and flat and I need to fill in this area here and you can see that I've cut these ribs back in here and I want to do a dry fit to see if this will fit in here or if I need to cut these ribs out a bit more but if I put this piece of wood in it's going to get stuck in there and I, it's hard to get back out so here's a quick little trick get some dental floss uh, I like cool mint for this. Uh, just make sure you get extra wide because it's nice and strong. And you can put one of those on each side. Put that in like that. Do the same thing on the other side. And now you can push that in all the way. So in my case it goes all the way in here but there's still something stopping here. So I still need to do some work here. But now to pull it out it's just that easy. So, And the next tip is sent to us by Jim from Columbia. And Jim has suggested that a lot of the miter saws and chop saws that we get, what they're giving us to change the blades with now are these little Allen wrenches. And they're usually put somewhere on the saw that I can never remember where mine is, so I keep it somewhere else. But the other thing with these Allen wrenches is sometimes those blades get on there pretty tight and they're hard to get off. And what he's suggesting is a couple of things. First of all, you can make a little handle and look, it's really simple. You just drill a hole, uh, pretty easy to carve a slot in there. And now you've got a little, uh, a little Allen wrench, a little T, what they call a T wrench. And if you've got a few of these around, you could make this permanent. You could actually glue a top on that or you could just use tape and wrap that up temporarily, or you could just leave it this way because even with this, you still get lots of tension, even though you can pop it out pretty easily. So that's a really good tip. The other thing that Jim did was he made a special little holder on his saw uh, which wouldn't work for mine, but remember <laughs> Ernie sent us these little pencil holders and look that would fit on there just perfectly so you could actually attach that to the back of the saw. It's nice and green, so <laughs> green or red or blue so it would stand out. So it's another way of, of attaching these someplace that you would know where it was on your saw quick and easy to get at. So some good tips there Jim, thanks. Now this tip was sent in by James from Florida uh, and James uses this um, pegboard material for making his own shelves and what James uses and I didn't know this was available you can actually purchase squares of this material in a steel it's a 20 gauge so it's fairly light uh, and it's 16 inches by 16 inches it's perfect for making using the holes the problem with this stuff as you can tell from some of these holes is they wear out very quickly now the steel is going to do the same thing eventually it won't wear out nearly as quickly as this but the one thing that you can use are these little Vix bits and I'll show you a close-up of that. So James is suggesting using the steel uh, and that's a great idea but the other thing you can do because the steel will wear out the, the drill bit will wear the steel eventually as well and one of the things you can do to save that is to use one of these Vix bits. They are, these are little center finding bits and they don't allow the bit to actually touch the material whether it's steel or this fiberboard so these little holes will last a lot longer before they start wearing out. So just something else that you may want to look at. This next tip is actually a little jig and this is from Michael just outside of Vancouver and Michael has made a jig for his little pocket hole jig. Now these things are fairly inexpensive. I think they're like, I don't know, $12, $15. I don't use this very often anymore, uh, but this one, if you get into a tight spot, and this is the only way of getting in here, this one I, I like for that, but I know some of you use this more regularly. Now 
the way this little jig works, I'm going to take this apart so you can see. Basically, I have it setting on a, a piece of plywood. On top of the plywood, I have it setting on a piece of MDF that's exactly three quarters of an inch. And that's because most of the wood that we're using is three quarters of an inch. So the way this works, the wood comes in, sits flat against this backer board, and now the little um, pocket hole jig will just fit right in there. And mine's a little bit snug, and that's, that's actually good. Now when you put that in there, you can take that clamp, these clamps, and these clamps come in a variety of different sizes, and lock that down. And now, I'm just going to turn this around so I can do it a little easier. And now you can just drill your pocket hole. And there it is. That's just how quick and easy that is to use. Release that. You can lift that and your wood will come right out and there's your pocket hole right there. And so just a quick easy jig to make uh, and of course there will be details on Woodwork Web on this one but I wanted to show you what it looks like underneath here because that's important. And what I've done, when I first put this together, what I found was this was too, it was hard to get the wood in. So I've just used a very, very thin, you can see how thin that is, very thin piece of veneer. You could use very thin cardboard on there. In fact, you could even use paper. Uh, about four or five sheets of paper on there would do the same thing. And all that does is just lift a, a little bit just enough so that the wood fits in there a little bit more um, uh, without uh, having to sort of jam it in there. So that's a great little jig, Michael. Thanks for that. For those of you who missed the announcement a couple weeks ago, uh, I'm going to be visiting the Kansas City Show, which is January 2020, uh, January 17th to 19th. And I'm only going to be at the show probably Friday afternoon for two, three hours, uh, and Saturday sort of midday for three, four hours. I haven't set times yet. Um, so hopefully I'll get to see some of you there. Uh, oh, and also I'm going to be speaking at the Lee's Summit Woodworkers Guild uh, on the Tuesday before. So that's the 14th of January, so two or three days before the show. Uh, and guests are welcome there. So if you're in the neighborhood, uh, come on out and uh, we'll get, maybe get to meet you there as well. And of course, all details will be in the description box below and in the article on Woodwork Web. So I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching today.